Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look at the wave equation. And we're going to first take a look at a wave equation of a string, and then try to compare that to the wave equation for electromagnetic radiation. There should be a correlation between that. So here is a string. It's bopping up and down. So the displacement in the y direction is somehow related to the movement in the x direction, the velocity of the wave. Here's the equation for the wave. The displacement in the perpendicular direction as a function of position and time is equal to the amplitude of the oscillations times the cosine of kx minus omega t. x is the distance in the horizontal direction, t is the elapsed time. Omega is the radial frequency and k is the wave number, which is 2 pi over lambda. Now, here's the general wave equation in one dimension. If you want to do it in two or three dimensions, you have to add two, another one or two terms for the direction in the y and for the uh, direction in, in the z direction. But for the one dimension here, we're good. So what we're going to do here is show that this indeed represents the general wave equation in one dimension with using the wave equation for a string. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the y, which is the function right there, and take the second derivative with respect to x, and then take the y again, take the second derivative with respect to t, and plug it into the equation to see if the left side does indeed equal the right side. So first what we're going to do here is take the derivative of y with respect to x, and so that's equal to a. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, that would be times minus the sine of kx minus omega t, times the derivative of the angle with respect to x, and of course in this case that would be the variable, that would be a constant, so we simply get k. And so that means that this is equal to minus ka times the sine of kx minus omega t. Now we take the second derivative of that, and we get minus ka, the derivative of the sine, of course is in this case the cosine of kx, minus omega t times the derivative of the angle with respect to x, which again would be k, and we can see that the second derivative with respect to x is equal to minus k squared a times the cosine of kx minus omega t, and of course the cosine, a times the cosine of kx minus omega t, that's back my original function, so this could be written as minus k squared times y. We can do the same again with the function, but now we're going to take the derivative with respect to t and see what happens. So we take the, second, the first derivative of y with respect to time is equal to minus a times the sine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of the angle, but in this case with respect to time, that would be times the minus omega. So this becomes plus a omega times the sine of kx minus omega t. Now we take the second derivative of the function with respect to time and we get uh, a omega times the cosine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of the angle which would be minus omega and so that means that the second derivative of y with respect to time is equal to minus a omega squared times the cosine of kx minus omega t and then remember that a times the cosine of kx minus omega t is the original function, so this can be written as the second derivative of y with respect to time is equal to minus omega squared times y. Notice then that this is equal to minus k squared y, and this is minus omega squared y. Now, let's plug that into our equation right here. On the left side, we plug in minus k square y, so minus k square y is equal to 1 over v squared times this right here, which is minus omega times omega square y. And notice that we have a y on both sides, a negative on both sides, so that cancels out, so we have k squared is equal to 1 over v squared times omega squared, or k squared over omega squared is equal to 1 over v squared. Now the question is, is that indeed correct? Well, notice that velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And the frequency is omega divided by 2 pi. So this can be written as omega divided by 2 pi. And we know that k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda. So that means lambda is 2 pi over k. 
So lambda is 2 pi over k. And so the two pi's cancel out. And that means that the velocity is equal to omega divided by k. We come back over here. And so we see that k over omega is the inverse of velocity. And k squared over omega squared is the inverse of velocity squared. So in other words, 1 over velocity squared equals 1 over velocity squared. And you can see that this indeed represents a wave equation of a string. Now, if that represents a wave equation of a string, we should also be able to use the very same equation to describe electromagnetic radiation. So in the next video, we're going to take this very same concept and describe electromagnetic radiation in terms of the general wave equation in one dimension. Of course, this can be done in two and three dimensions, but for simplicity right now, let's just do it in one dimension, and we'll see that this equation also holds true for electromagnetic radiation. So if you're interested, stay tuned and watch the next video.